Subscribe, love, like. We're sponsored by the Spunk Lube and rebroadcast by the Demon Seed Radio Network. We could not do any of this without you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please give us that bump. Porn Stars and People Podcast of Dan Frigolette. I'm here with the, the ladies of uh, Two Girls, One Mike, Mike. Podcast. Um, the premise of the podcast is, you said like a thousand things. <laughs> we review the holes and the plot holes in pornography. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, so we're, well, it's a comedy podcast to start with, and we look at, we do a couple different formats. One is we'll take a long form, like hour or two hour long form, <laughs> and review the plot. Half the time we don't even watch the banging. Unless yeah. they stay in character. Stay in character, we will watch your plot, uh, Alex. Okay. <laughs> Other times we talk to people who are industry Jason, so we'll have everyone from like foot fetish specialists to porn stars interviewing like Nina Hardley, Lisa Ann, Tommy Pistol. Uh, miss, uh, let's see, we'll have uh, masturbation coaches because someone's got to cheer you on, right? Yeah. I, one of my favorites would be had. That's Samantha. a cheer. That's a masturbation cheerleader. Though. Oh yeah, we had it's a different thing. We had Samantha Mack on, and she does porno boot camp, and oh, I loved God. her. She needs to be in our lady squad. Yeah. Okay. Which is great. So I mean, we'll have phone sex who, operators. Oh, yeah, it's just yeah. Angry. Is that still a lane? Oh my god, yeah. You I know, didn't realize that some people, people doing that. some millennials are making phone calls apparently to phone sex operators. Um, I so it, it's I've never have you ever had phone sex? I haven't actually. I don't think I what? I think I've had phone foreplay. What generation are we in? What, what are you I'm I'm an elder millennial. I'm in my mid thirties. I'm thirty I'm millennial too. Right it's thirty six. Cool. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm thirty seven in like two weeks. Um so I'm once you're thirty seven, you're forty. I think so. I feel I, like that. I feel, like I feel that's fair. this is the last year of my thirties. I feel this is like I, when you're the most thirties you'll ever be when you're thirty six, and then you're basically forty. I feel like that's fair. Yeah. So I've never I've listened to phone sex things because I called into them in high school because it was hilarious with your friends. Oh yeah. But I've never had phone sex with anyone. Um, but I've had plenty of like Snapchat mm-hmm. type sex. I I'm, I don't know. I can't say I'm too old for Snapchat sex because no, I I was too married not. for Snapchat sex. By the time that became a big thing, I'd yeah. already found my designated dick. So yeah, just you know. Are you still married? I indeed. Okay, right, right. Nice. Um, so yeah, so it is interesting that, that I, th- I thought it was a lost art. Um, no, I mean if you think about it, line. there are people who want to divulge your deepest darkest fantasy, but they don't want to put themselves in front of a camera. Yeah. What's the easiest sure. way to do that except with phone sex? Right, operator. that's the and and, and and not the end and everything. The, uh, the, the voice that does it. Yeah, there's this. Uh, what's what's what it called? It's ASMR yes. thing that's happening now. People are eating peaches and it's sensual. A little tapping. I don't know about eating peaches, but I was, <laughs> I was talking so to my friend Amber Lee Rothfield, who yeah. uh, she'll she, be here literally in, in thirty minutes. We oh my god, her so yeah. much. <laughs> so you could ask her all about the phone sex, but when we were talking on her show, she mentioned that. People who are in super high stress jobs, yeah, um, she can like they will be the ones who go towards the ASMR. Okay, because it's a way for them to relax. Just gets into the brain. It's yeah. the same as like the uh, like the uh, what do they call these? The the um, fidget spinner. Fidget spinner. Fidget spinner right? I love That's that you could just do this <laughs> and we all do at the same time. It's like, well, he's not, it doesn't look like he's finishing with the clitoris. That's not the really That's bad. not playing with the clit. It's oh, really bad. God. Unless it's terrible. It's, uh, we give you a little more credit than that. We think, <laughs> we think of enough hours plus a Hitachi, you might find it. Right. Which, enough porn, you got it down. Yeah. It's, uh, I found it. Uh, the, yeah. So the fitness, <laughs> like the fitness, it's the ASMR. It's that same, it's that same kind of thing, that, yeah. that, that quality. I've, I've, I have listened to one of these things on an airplane once when I was having these when I was having this weird like I couldn't go to sleep so I listened to the like I don't believe in it but I listened to like the sleep guy there's like okay. a sleep hypnot- hypnotist guy just on says the a plane. handful of things and then like it's supposed to be like subliminal yeah or something. And, you, and you pass out it was it's, good I have tried one of those hypnotist case, uh, tapes like I, I grew up very overweight and I still you know kind of have to work at it but like I, I tried one of them to hypnotize you to lose weight and it's, yeah. I don't know if it was just screaming like very quietly stop fucking eating yeah, what, but, is, like, yeah, what are they sending I don't know what they said but man I did not lose weight from those you know what made me lose weight is me just eating less can yeah. I just actually come out with a whole series of ASMR like diet Terry, uh, 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 audio. Yeah. It'll just be a Jewish mom criticizing you. 
I assure you, boss. Is that what you're going to eat? That. I get <laughs> the opposite. Do you have a bowl of lots of ball soup? Is that, do you want to have a third? Aren't you looking a little heavy in that? Are you, it's, I, I had a Jewish girl. It's great. Right. No, mine's the opposite. Is, is if uh, if you don't eat at your uh, your Italian oh, like yeah. relative's house, and they are like, what, yeah. what are you, too good for us? Like, you're not, you're not in the family anymore? You're, you don't love you're me? You're looking awfully you're looking thin. thin. What are you like, doing? Yeah, I'm trying, yeah. Thin, yeah, yeah I'm trying to have people want to see me with my shirt off, Grandma. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like, you're looking I, thin. That's what's that's what's sexy. I want this shit to look like sadness at the dinner table, okay? There's yeah. a reason that Johnny Sins looks the way he has. He hasn't touched a carb in the last 10 years. That's funny. The um, carb is such a is such a loaded word these days. True. It's, I, I, my day job is writing about nutrition and yeah. carbs. Carbs are fine. Carbs are fine. Now, here's fine. the one thing I would tell people. If they want to look good for an event, and they're already at a weight they like, but they want to look that little bit tighter uh, for the next few days, you can eat the exact same number of calories, but just switch them over, take carbs out, and you will lose yeah. water weight. But it'll come right back as soon as you and plant put, at a carb. And put, uh, But it's also, it's like, I th- it's it's the useless ones. It's like, my view on like white potatoes is, if the white potato tasted good with nothing crammed into it, uh, then that's what you should eat. If, if you have to add cream, butter, ch- cheese, salt and pepper, like you cook a sweet potato, that's a good thing now. You don't have to add anything to it. I mean, white potatoes alone are actually fairly healthy. They have a decent amount of fiber. They aren't actually all that highly caloric. It's just we throw so much right. junk. And it's, I mean... Because we want it to taste good. Yeah, I mean, if you can't make that thing taste good, if you're not a person who likes the flavor, which most of us don't, without a bunch of fattening yeah. things, like... You know, you're gonna you're gonna gain the weight from you know from the three pads of butter, yeah. not the potato itself. Can you imagine if the Irish potato family was just a bunch of Irish people saying, mm, "No, we we are just we're not, not gonna eat it the way it is." We're not into it. We, we just we just don't have butter. We have potatoes. Yeah, we, we just we, need there's butter. There's so many potatoes. <laughs> we need cream. Do you know that they the actually have a way to like the? Uh, I know we're getting way off the topic of. No, there's uh, no on or off. Topic. Oh, I like that. So they're actually so the thing that caused the Irish potato famine was a thing called blight, uh, and it's a I believe a fungus. They actually have a way to genetically modify potatoes so that they do not get blight now. So yeah. genetic nice. modification could prevent a lot of people yeah. from dying. Uh, I think it's called the potato vaccine. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna go with that. I like it. I like that. I read that. I read that on the internet somewhere. No, that was my favorite moment in time when uh, potatoes are on when like that that thing happened where where like it's no longer relevant to say. I think I read that somewhere. There was a moment in time. <laughs> I think. I no think value. now. No, no. I think now saying I think I read that somewhere is now a joke about people saying I think I read that. Yeah. somewhere. that's because it what used to have right? a value, and then and then and then everything became trash. Yeah. And then everything became the internet. And then there was no more. <laughs> everything no more became facts. the internet describes 2016 perfectly. <laughs> like now we just, we're all a part of it. It's all a part of us. It's all a part of us. Uh, it's your Jewish like, uh, like, like, you like, like, like C8. I just, I just got, I guess, got done saying dark waters. Uh, C8. That's the, that's the, the, the manufactured carbon that is in the thing that, that was in the thing. That was in yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's in all of us. That was the end of the day. The thing was like, oh, it's in all of us and we can't process it. So you are going to die. Oh. It was the end of the movie. Like, well, where you're going to die. Um, you're going to die is a depressing movie. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of. We're all going to die. It, it, it's inevitable. They're not wrong. It's real. The gas heat of the universe is coming for us. Valhalla, kumbaya. They're not wrong. Um, no, so there's no off topic for this podcast. And the, my goal, honestly, with it is, is, to, is, to, is to be less um, like porn exploratory because I do think that, that a lot of people are taking that lane. And plus, you guys are deep, oh, wow. delving in deep with plot, which I think is also an unexplored lane. Half the time, like, I don't even watch the sex unless they stay in character. Yeah. So when they when people, like, and this so is really why, only whenever Tommy Pistol yeah. is in it. What's it, the most distracting it. thing that can happen in a porn where you get so removed from the from the, the, the drama? Um, oh, shit. Um, well, sex does distract me from the drama. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's I, every so often we'll see something that, like, that, it's not, there's, like, we'll see a continuity error and that will bother sure. me. Like, I think uh, the Avengers really bug me. Because, like, we like, we like things that, like, good parodies are hard to do. We had Alison McKnight, who was a porn writer for a while, and we, she was an, she was a great guest. And we talked about, you know, what makes a good parody. And you take something in the movie and you turn it all about sex. Like, in, uh, uh, what was it, um, uh, I'll remember this sooner than later, um, Pulp Fiction. And the briefcase had, I believe, uh, a dildo in it or something. Oh like yeah, and pump fiction. Yeah, or something. Pump, oh, pump the, fiction. Yeah. yeah, that was it. It's. It, I, I thought, thought it was pump friction. There were, well, there were. There, well, there was another one which. Okay, so there was like, there's pulp 
uh, fiction, there's pump fiction, and then there's pump fr- or pulp friction. Pulp friction, yeah. which is one of them was like a mobster movie made like 15 years ago that had nothing to do with oh, that's pulp great. fiction. Oh, that's great. And then there was like the Brazzers one, and I'm forgetting if it was pump or pulp. What? A, what I, don't I, was, I think we watched pulp fiction. Or, no, sorry, uh, pulp, pump friction. Pump fiction. That I was don't know watched. that I've ever seen a porn front to back. It's we. Uh, it's funny because I'll. I find myself like I'm like. Look, I can only masturbate so many times watching a two-hour porno right. until I'm like, all right, I'm going to speed up through the porn and watch the yeah. plot. But like, uh, I'll still bring up the because there were so many parodies of the Avengers. The one that we watched uh, happened to have it had China in it, and she just she looked uncomfortable and not uncomfortable in a oh give it to me harder. That's uncut. Like that's that's a good pain kind of. It's yeah. like she looked kind of uncomfortable and like. Oh, this is kind of not good. Uncommitted to them. She's like, I mean, she's writing um, uh, uh, reverse uh, cowgirl, and she has this look on her face of, uh... And I'm like, this is this just this ain't it. It's like, and just uncommitted to the plot. Oh yeah, well the plot was bad too because like you would think that instead of like the you know how it was always the blue glowy thing in the Avengers movie, why didn't they make it a blue glowy dick or something? You know, it was just there there was not really a cohesive plot at all or storyline. Well, honestly, I could say that that's actually the problem with Avengers. Like, if I think back to what the Avengers movies are, I don't even know for sure that there is anything. It's, it's just like we put all the all-stars in one place. It's all about vaguely homoerotic yeah, and, uh, banter between Tony Stark sure. and Captain America. It's basically. watching, and it's watching the that. Pro Bowl. I'm just, I'm just saying, I want I want a good Avengers parody in which there's Tony Stark, Captain America, bag. that has to exist. I mean, also you have to bear in mind that whenever we do I don't feel like they... I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, also you have to bear in mind, whenever we do our porn review parodies, we're not really, I mean, we are reviewing it for the fun. plot, but yeah. well, not only that, but like we use it as a jumping off point to talk about a million other yeah, topics. Like here's, yeah. here's our little common ground and then boom, into the air with, with everything we can yeah. get from this. But no, I mean, we, we just sit there and go. there's latent homosexuality between those two. I think, I think there's, America? there's I love it. There's a good little bit of like, like they well, both, they won't say. They both think they're like the greatest. I think it's more... Like you're waiting for when they're fight, fighting for them to be like, are you as hot as I am? I think I it's am. Thor. Like, I think I it's Thor that Hulk. Thor Hulk. I think it's Thor Hulk. You know, they were really good together in Ragnarok. It was, yeah. It was a very... I could I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. I could... I, who's... I, I think... Because they're would, both sort of like unbeatable, like from a masculinity standpoint. So I think they're the, they're the ones who, who should fuck. I'd be down. For and it. this is completely as a as a uh, as a heterosexual perspective. I would. I watch. think it's. I so went to that yeah. porn. It would be good. I would. I would grow a dick for that porn. It would be good. I want it. I'm down. Just too giant. I mean, I feel like I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a parody. I've yeah. I've I've clicked onto the Avatar ones. We try to start people on good ones. Uh, I will point you towards uh, Pee Wee's uh, Big Triple X Adventure was one of our favorites. Pee Wee's. Big yes, I mean, look. Like, who's the guy? Uh, so you have Tommy Pistol playing Pee Wee Herman. Okay. And when I say he's he fun. nails yeah. the laugh and the look, oh my no god. Shit. I would think you're he's watching fun. Paul Rubin. I, I would, you know, Paul Rubin should jack off to that like, more in homage. Sure, yeah. I sure, yeah. should, sure. well, what's he doing at a public has. theater? Here's <laughs> what's funny. Ben this will this was, this, there, right. was a, there was a moment in time where you could gain a career from doing what Pee Wee Herman did in a movie theater, and then now we've gone past it. So we there was a moment right in the middle. Where you could be nobody or like semi-famous and jerk off in a movie theater and become famous, and then now we're sort of to this other consent level where like now you're a pig. Now we love to come back. Not only yeah. that, but like we've gone through such weird phases. Like we had Sydney Leathers on our show. Sydney Leathers, uh, I do you remember Wienergate with no. Anthony Weiner? Oh sure, sure, she sure. Was, yeah, she was the one. Now here's the saddest part we found out when she was on, and we didn't. I don't think I realized this before the show. So they never even met. All they've done was sext, and they, yeah. I believe they got on the internet. This is what's crazy. Canceled well, before canceled was a thing. I have some. I have some people in my life where that was it. When Tinder was first like like hitting the the edges, and there was no um, that you couldn't you could. So now you can fast forward to another city. Tinder, right? You can go to a place that you're not yet. That's part I, of it. I wouldn't know. Well, well, so now I'm giving information. So that's one of the features. So apparently that's I can, the thing you're I can swipe. I can be in Vegas and be swiping in another city. Okay. Or whatever I'm going next. But when I when I drove to Alaska, we didn't have that. So I would have a limited amount of time. I'd be, we were doing one city a day. And <gasps> so I'm like swiping, swiping, swiping. So I'd match with somebody. Uh, then I'd be gone. 
and then we would exchange phone numbers on the on the idea that maybe I'd ever come back there. But he, but there was no coming back. There was no rerouting that route. We went to Alaska. We're flying home, and so I had multiple sexual relationships with women who we were just sending news, and we've still never met. And we've still never had sex. Oh my God! That's so the world Anthony we live in. I am you Anthony Wiener. Carlos Danger Man. I am Anthony Wiener. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Except, you know what? That could be actually what was the a follow-up uh, film. I am Anthony Wiener. Yeah. I, well, I was single and I was fine. I was like, I was on solid uh, ground. But he's married. Was, he was married. He yeah. was, I, I believe, a se- senator or congressman. I think it's not a problem uh, that he's a senator. Well, not only that, but he also was sexting someone underage. Yeah, right. he was sexting so underage. Yeah, underage. And, the, and there was that picture of him with his kid right next to him, like tucked under his arm with his erect dick underneath like bulging out from his Look, uh, people, underwear and for the record i gotta say babies, some are, so- babies are sexy some some men were born gifted he was born a tripod oh yeah. weird i don't remember i don't think that it was that as much as like you can always get it you ladies you know you can get it you can get the right angle you can take the photo from the yeah. right angle. yeah that was also he's very was skinny powerful. skinny guy big dick uh skinny guy long dick is, is a pretty good look well now especially um with the new iphone with the like triple camera you can enlarge things is that right? oh my god yes trump wouldn't have had to have done that to his hands uh, <laughs> because i do notice i do notice my hands on people it is a thing I don't know. We just we just why well, we just stopped dead on this. Yeah, all of a sudden it's like small hands. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward moment. Um, okay, so I so I've seen it. I've seen an avatar more. I know it's good hands. Uh, actually, our f- no, well, no. I was gonna say our friend wrote the avatar porn. Did she? I know she did the Smurf porn. She wrote the script for that. I have not. Seen Maybe it. Allison wrote the avatar porn. I will check. There were a lot. No, she definitely did because she sent me a photo of of uh, people in full ge- costume. Full oh avatar. Yeah. Um, in like the blue shower, getting that one like I get. makeup done and voting, yes. That one I get because it's like that's all. That's all we kind of wanted out of that movie. Yeah, well, we didn't get. Are they going to have avatar things? We wanted, things to, fuck, we wanted, to, fuck, we wanted to fuck the superior race. Yeah, yeah. Well, they did. His, 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 they his wanted ab- to have his hair avatar sex. Avatar fucked the lady. That was like, how they had sex with hair sex. Yeah. They just plugged the hair into each other. Like, and that was that was. Well, there was penetration sex. also. I, I don't I don't recall there being penetration. They, once they because that was the fun one. Was like so you bonded with this man. It just felt like an old Native American uh, movie that I saw. It, it they, like, they like brought this woman to the village, and they like they like checked her, and they like wanted to see if she was a silver. It, it was kind of Pocahontas cross with Ferngully. Yeah, that was. I never show. saw either of those actually. That so now I feel it's okay under. You just feel like me all the yeah. time. When yeah, people were in those movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let's, well, let's go somewhere else. Uh, well, you know, let's keep here. What is well? Because I wanted to ask this: What's the best Wonder Woman one that you've seen? We I haven't seen have that. Seen okay. Because I've, I've got uh, multiple people even this week have told me. Because I know Kenzie uh, she did Captain Marvel, Taylor yeah. did. Oh, Captain Marvel. Yeah. That's what it was. Kenzie Taylor did Which, Captain and Marvel. And you need to know that because it's one of like the big films at ABS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I remember they were trying to finish it. She sold out of them at, at, at um, Exotica. Supposedly the tea on that is that um, they think that the cast... I, I heard from a friend that the casting director kind of hired her. But still, then held auditions. Oh no way! Yeah, no. just but, in case. Um, I'm not going to tell. Well, I don't know. I don't know um, if this is how true it is. But that's a tea that I was given. But she kept the part. She, yeah, she did great at the part. This is a thing that people do a lot, and I think it's and I think it's silly, and I think we need to stop doing it. Yeah. It's this uh, what if vibe because they, they they how many times do you see these dumb articles where they're like, uh, here were the five people that were up for uh, Forrest Gump. <laughs> the movie. It's like, yeah, they didn't fucking get it. There's a reason they didn't Jason get it. Jason Momoa, yeah. Forrest Gump. They didn't get it. The, 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 Tom Hanks got it because it, that he was right for the part, and that's why that movie is that movie. So this whole like, oh, like, oh, I almost died. Like, oh, what happened? You're like, oh, this car was near me. Like, wait, did you ever get hit? No, but I almost died. What? All of the circumstances that would have happened. That's the that's the moment we I, do. Well, I could have. If these six think. things changed, then right. maybe if death everything would in my life was different, I'd be dead. That sounds. <laughs> Like, it's just attention-seeking. It's yeah. like when people, like, after well, a mass tragedy, they're like, like yeah. oh, there's a school shooting. I went to that a mall once. One of my friends has a kid that I once heard. went there for an event oh, on yeah. a Saturday three years ago. Right. And it could have happened then. It totally could have been the same if every circumstance was different. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, this, this so, so, so Kenzie got it. Yeah. And she killed it. Yeah. So you've seen it. Uh, I've seen parts of it. I haven't watched, sat down and watched a whole film yeah. yet. Did you see the original? Uh, no, I haven't. I mean, again, really bad when it comes to Avengers and yeah. superhero movies. No. I, no, I, I think I've seen the, like, 
I think there are a few in the MCU that I haven't seen, but I've seen the vast majority. Yeah. I, I skipped a bunch of the Captain Americas because I didn't feel like yeah, anything was happening. I, it's like, hey, there's Captain America and Tony Stark fighting again. Yeah, Ooh. that one, and that was the only reason I saw that one. Civil was War. Because they were like, I, they, they teamed up on it. You're gonna, you're gonna laugh. I was in an argument with my husband when we went to see Civil War, so I was distracted by the movie the whole time, and I think it's still like my least favorite one because oh, like the fine. entire time we're watching it, I'm like, we're gonna argue again when we get home. Are we? So <laughs> We're fine now. I have a I have a similar story with with Vicky Cristina Barcelona because I was dating a girl. That movie? I've never seen it. I was, dating, <laughs> I was dating a girl in 2008 when it came out. She went to the movies, saw the movie, came home angry at me as if I was in the movie. She like came home like I was doing a threesome, like, oh. and that had that didn't happen. And I was not in the movie, and I didn't do a threesome uh, behind her back. And so she like, so this movie still like haunts me because I want to see it, but then it's like, it's like, no, fuck that. It was like three people in a relationship together. It was, it was a good time. Yeah. It was a rocking little bit. Yeah. Time. There was one film that I definitely went to the theater but didn't see, and it's uh, when I went got my first kiss. Uh, it was basically a makeout session, and so I. Uh, I, I, it was, the movie was the pursuit of happiness, and I technically pursued my own happiness. Hilarious! That was a, that was that whole that Same one time. in. Um, uh, I remember when Jerry was making out with a date during Schindler's List. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a whole plot point in Seinfeld one time. So I mean, I, next we'll probably review Schindler's Fist. It's like I, I feel Just like I got is there a Schindler's Fist? Fist? Yes, sir. This is so good. Okay, wait. Let me ask you this one: Is there, is there a Knight's Tale? Parody? Mm, Night's Tale. What's that? Night's Tale with, with Heath, uh, Ledger. Heath Ledger. I got laid off a night yes! Tale so many times. <laughs> so many times I got laid off. I don't know why. I would put it on in the background in high school and college, and every time I put it on the background, I would rail. So if you're looking to get laid and you're having trouble, Night's folks, tale. Night's Tale. It's, it's not going to work. The, it's here's what I, enough. Here's all I've noticed there. is that it's not going to work for everybody, right? You, like, you take your lane. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like Anthony Hamilton or D'Angelo Pandora and Night's Tale. That might not be your lane. But that's my. <laughs> You've got your got your 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 way to do it. Yeah. What's the Night Still parody? What's it called? I don't know, but it definitely exists. I know it exists. And if not, I just want to be in the background. Can it be Tail T A I L? Yeah, that's the question. Well, yeah. the thing is, they'll make parodies of things that you really don't expect to be parodies or need sometimes, it. or needed. Yeah. Do you know what um, film I saw parody of the other day? Uh, do you remember Life of Pi? From yeah. Here? Yeah, they porn parodied Life of Pi. But he's which, no girls. They put some girls in, you know what, they turn, the turn a tiger into a cougar, I guess. Do they? <laughs> there are Indian women in it, yeah. Oh, that's great. And they have like a stuffed tiger, and there's a boat. I would see that. <laughs> I was about to say, we, we should review it for the, the last, just because it's so bizarre. The last interview right before this one, literally the uh, the girl asked me uh, if I could fuck any animal. And I was like, it's not going to come up. It's not going to, like, it's not a situation that's going to come up. But then I said, as long as it's consensual... I'm a fucking dolphin. Let's do it. Like, I may as well. I may as but you'll be then the dolphin fucker for, like, the rest of your career. Fine with that. Fine it's like that. if you could do it with nobody knowing, the animal somehow can voice consent, all that good stuff. Right, that's what I said. As long as it's consensual, yeah. I'm Which, happy. And I'm since fine. And since we all know an animal cannot consent in this lifetime that we know of, not going to happen. Um, I don't know. Dolphins are really smart. Has a dolphin ever made an iPhone? No. Here's, no. here's what I said. Well, the dolphin program the VCR? No. Uh, just nobody, to piss off John You can't John go from McAfee. iPhone. Uh, it's a VCR. That's the, I, I could program one in the 90s. <laughs> the, um, the, I met a guy in Springfield, Missouri, who thinks that aliens made the iPhone. So I'm, I'm still out. Oh. I don't know. I'm still out. Mm. Maybe it's aliens. Wait, wait, you said he was from Springfield? Springfield? Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. Okay, if it was from Springfield, Massachusetts, I would have explained a few things. Yeah, yeah, I was just in Springfield, Massachusetts. I, like spent a, I spent a weekend, one month there. Yeah. <laughs> it's that's a place where you go for your brain cells to just simmer out. It's, the entire um, uh, uh, economy of Springfield, Massachusetts, is either college, casino, or basketball uh, hall of fame. Is that, is, it, is that what it is? I believe. I've seen it when driving back from a orgy there once. No shit. I didn't know it was that close. I'll, I'll go to that. You mean the orgy or the Basketball Hall of Fame? Both. <laughs> Both. I mean, I'm not saying I was in the orgy. Of course not. Yeah. Why are you... Why, why are you why, well, you're just craft services. Are you plausible deniability? Yeah. Um, so, sure. So many people who are watching this are going to be judgmental. You're married, right? <laughs> uh, basically. Okay. Yeah. You, well, She's um, double penetrated. Sorry. I mean, DP'd. How do you feel... <laughs> Thanks. ...about... Um, People like getting jealous of people's past. This is a thing that I think is is oh, a problem. 
I don't know why people are doing this. I don't know how to defend myself in these situations. How do you get mad at somebody for something they did in the past? That's what led them to you. It's insecurity. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, you had previous people and you're obviously thinking about them while you're having sex right. and you want them more than obviously. me. Obviously. Uh, you could not possibly want this dick that you're currently riding right. on <laughs> that you keep telling me that you want. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be, be mad fair. at you for things yes. you did before you met me. Have you thought of other men while still sleeping with a, well, not, not current, but like in any situation, have you thought of a different man than the one that you're sleeping with? Yeah. Yes, yeah. and I would hope that he's thought of other ways. I'm sure he had. We've been having sex, a lot of sex for the last five years. If no. he's not thinking of someone else occasionally, he's probably bored. I don't know. Yeah. Like, like, I'm interesting enough, but like there are other women in the world that are also interesting that I'm sure he's visualizing. Yeah. I, it would be, like we watch porn together. I know he's at least looking at other women while I he's touching himself. I do this himself. thing where I try to find, uh, where I try to find porn stars that resemble my exes so that I can continue the relationship. <laughs> Called the porn star doppelganger game. Oh, the remember. doppelbanger. Is that what it's called? Oh, yeah, doppelbanger. Yeah. Do yeah. doppelbanger. Cool. And actually, um, hotmovies.com now has a generator where you can input a photo and they will They'll find you. Uh, actually, they will find the closest uh, porn match. Yeah. Here's what I found as a as a as a as a man. It doesn't have to be that close. I just have to convince myself that that's <laughs> You just have her. to squint while you're like, you're like, oh, not even that's that. That's not where it is. Once I'm, once I'm a year into that thing and the other relationship's gone, I've actually convinced myself in my brain that that was the person I dated. Like, I literally think that for that, like, for, for like two years while I was like 25, I dated Rachel Rocks, which I did not. I'm glad for your penis, though. Yeah. It's, it seems to work. Yeah. Right? That relationship That's, works with that. Yeah. Out. Well, the only, the only problem that I found with this situation is all the people Listen who the same, same sure. age, like, same okay. period of time, um, were, were uh, the people that I was, like, really getting in tune with, like, in porn, have left the business. Mm -hmm. And so there's no new content. So so yeah. I started going back to this like 480p content Aww. to like find my old great scenes. It's, do, do you want to, do you want recommendations? We will give you all the recommendations. Hey, you, get some good, you get some good old scenes. Oh my gosh, we're, we're not old scenes with new scenes. Yeah, I'm just. Oh, I, I, I can find new scenes. I Sometimes know. I get nostalgic. Oh, that's true. I, it's funny. Like two computers ago that I'm sure still exist somewhere in yeah. my house. There was like the collection of clips from the apartment that I had that had really terrible Wi-Fi. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, you're like you download them when you can get them. Yeah. But yeah, that that existed on my computer at one point, and I thought I was the only woman who had that. And then I then this podcast happened. And I realized I can't do it. Yeah. See, if I want to get nostalgic, I find a channel on the TV that doesn't work. There's a heart that's yeah. yeah. I just get onto that. That's a boob. That's definitely a boob. No, that's just fuzz. No, that's a boob. Good enough. Oh, yeah. that's a boob. No, that's Gordon Ramsay. Oh well. That's a boob. That's well, the same. yes, so, chef, take me to flavor. No, you guys are getting yeah. You guys are making me nostalgic for this for this one that I had the first VHS that I had that I stole from my buddy's dad. And I and it's oh like God. it's all I had. So I so it's the first time I ever saw because I was I was an I was an analog guy. I, I had I had only uh, magazines. So then all of a sudden I got I got this movie and I watched the movie. Uh, every every time every angle, you know what I mean? Like every scene, I would like convince myself, even if I wasn't attracted to what was going on, I'd be like, I gotta, I gotta do this for me today. <laughs> I gotta grow as a person. You gotta, gotta do something. Yeah, I want to find that tape. I wonder where that is. I have definitely heard of a number of friends growing up where how they would get porn uh, because the internet was not a thing yet. Is they would trade magazines in the woods. So yes. yeah, so all we would bury, we, we bury Playboy. Yes, yes, right. exactly that. So I just kind of want to go back out into the woods and do some treasure hunting and see if I can find some old Playboys. You gotta get one of the, you gotta get like a like, right. Yeah. Guy or counter see if any from a radioactive. My father, my father had a subscription to Playboy for a while, and I found out, and I and I had a good year run of him not knowing, and then I got greedy, and I started, <laughs> I, started, I, started, I, started I stopped returning them, and I uh, and then I snagged one out of the mailbox, and then nothing uh, will upset your father more than than his uh, Playboy subscription doesn't show up, and then and then so then when I so then when they when they caught me. Um, my sister was going through my shit because she thought I took something whereas I didn't. And so when they caught me, my father uh, was trying to give me this like speech about like being disappointed in me or whatever. It's like he's looking through the magazine. <laughs> It's like my mom's right here, like it's weird. Like, I'm just so disappointed Stop. in you. I hadn't even seen this one yet. And it's like, dude, I'm disappointed in you. That's my mom. I'm supposed to be. I'm 14. I'm supposed to be doing this. So it was this, it was this very fun, like, uh, like kind of like fucked up moment. Yeah, they, they do keep jerking off after they find the person that they like banging. He's trying to shame me. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, he, just, he just wanted to make sure that you were getting the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, he, well, no, he, was, not his he wanted, he wanted, uh, he wanted me to get sloppy seconds is what he wanted. 
because he was mad that he hadn't seen it yet. But he was paying yet. for it, so yeah, yeah, he should have dibs. Look, if, yeah. if one of you was going to get someone else's cum stains on it, it was going to be, or one of you jerking off of the thing with someone else's cum stains, it was going to be you, not him. We're a very clean family. <laughs> I'm very glad that you have it. Never, I've never accidentally come on anything I didn't want to come on. I'll, I'll yeah. take your word for that because I have no way to verify and I have no desire to hunt that town I'm very, I'm very, I'm very targeted. I my, feel like now I really want a porn Olympics because can you imagine yeah. that would so happen too? Yeah. Like there would be target plot practice. I, I, I got I distance. See, I want, I want I don't volume. Know I, yeah, I, I got distance. I, uh, I don't know if I have, I don't know if I have aim, but I have distance for sure. Yeah. These are. I had a, I had, a, I had, a, I had a bit for a while about I've never come. His face because she's never, and the other reason is because nobody's ever asked me to. And I was, and then the, the premise of the bit was like this idea that like I'm not just I'm not just accidentally coming on my wife's face like the rest of you guys are. <laughs> and it always gets this great response, um, but uh, I've moved on beyond the bit. Because what happened was when you do that bit and then you finally like reach a pinnacle and thing, then the girl that you're dating goes, "Oh, you've never come on my girl's face. I would like you to do that to me now." Like they wanted to. Oh, they wanted oh to I see. So nice. I see you planting Isn't that seed. No, I didn't know that this would be an effect. Now I know. So then, I, so I watch other comedians frame frame that that target sometimes with the audience. Um, so it's fun to watch. Or frame it's that. What I'm hearing is more like, people like, now are going to be stealing that bit of. Sure. Just, I've oh, never we're, we're on a girl's face. Sure. We're planting that seed yeah. for you. We're How many spread. LA comics or comics have stolen that? Yeah, Probably it's not a lot. And it's not a thing. Where do you guys live? Uh, LA. You do live in LA. Uh, no, I'm actually New York. No shit. How do you guys? How do you guys facilitate the podcast? It's obstacles. We record remotely. You do. Yeah. So we uh, re- we record remotely on our ends, and we have a video conferencing call. So yeah. whether it's us, our guests, I mean, they don't have to deal with LA traffic. I'm gonna pick your brain about it more because I've done Skype ones where then the audio doesn't line up with the video, and I don't know how to solve it. I can help you. Yeah. So we'll get into that. But um, editors who are more talented than us. Yeah. Well, so I I'm, so then my my take has always just been like, no, let's do it in person because I also feel like mm-hmm. I can't force the proper connection with a person from far away. Yeah. They can drift and they can be Having video is the big helpful thing. Yeah. Like if we were just yeah. doing audio, it would suck. And I've done podcasts where it's just audio only, and I'm like, I can't see you, and I can't tell if you're sitting there right. horrified at what I just said, right. or if I, like, how, how far down my throat did I just stick my foot? I can't like, And I yeah. like having someone's Am I going to interrupt you? Do you just, it is hard. hard. Yeah. It's too many, sometimes it's too many moving pieces with that one. And then if there's any lag at all, then you're kind of fucked. That's, that's what I'm always impressed with, the, with like the, how they figured it out in the news. It's, where it's like, there's still that lag. But they figured out how to not interrupt each other. Yeah, it's like we, take that beat. Yeah, knowing that point where it's like, okay, we've let it go a little too long. Someone's got who's got to say the thing now. It's getting weird. That's that is the thing when you first start a podcast, and I was on the radio for five years. It's like you're, and as a comedian, I'm afraid of silence. Yeah, that's that took me a little. As I do, I haven't done uh, much stand up, but I do an hour long uh, talk, and it's basically a stand up routine with a little bit of science mixed in yeah. for good measure. Uh, and silence is terrifying at first because yeah. you, you want to let a joke hang because you it's know good, you know those those moments in which they're like from that last thing that punchline you're like eh, and you just let it sit there. You gotta stay there. And, but like you, I started counting like one, yeah, two because if not, I in my head I'm like yeah, I let that hang for a while, and then I see the videotape, I'm like. Done. It like was I'm like, quick, yeah. how did I love? That? How did I do that? But it felt like so long. See, for podcasts, I feel like when it comes to jokes, you don't have to let them hang necessarily because yeah. it's not like yeah. uh, they're going to. They could always rewind to continue. Sure, sure, sure. Way, sure. You know? way, way, way different. It, it's completely different. Whereas you know, if you're in person, uh, and you know, if we had an audience, we, we would have to let them laugh before we could really yeah. continue. And that dynamic yeah. when you add the audience to a podcast, I think, is a, is a totally different. Uh, beast because it is because then you're playing to them yeah and then it sort of takes out the, again the sort of the, the panel connection um, but uh, well, I had a point that is long long gone now um, no there, we're going to help you with video there, don't worry yeah. it'll be your sister there, there is a thing there is a thing uh, but yeah there is a thing with the, with the time but it, but yeah well, as, a, as a person when you're trying to put that gap it's way shorter than yeah than what you think it actually would be Oh, yeah. But I'm not, I think I'm not as interested on a podcast, which is why I don't have a comedy centric podcast, in being funny. I just, I don't think it's as interesting because I, I, I'm already, I'm already eating in that, in that part of my, like, my brain because I go on stage. Um, and then a lot of times you get comedians on podcasts and they're just doing bits the whole time. Like, you never get yeah. to yeah. Like, like, are you talking to me or are you just trying out your material? Right. Yeah. Right. Mm. That's always. I don't hate it personally. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm so heavy into the industry yeah. that it's like I hate. It's like, dude, I just oh, want to talk to you. So like, you'll be in a car, everything's fine. Yeah, you're doing going to a, a, a you know a gig, and then you turn the cameras on, and it's a different fucking guy sitting here. 
Yeah. And you're like, dude, just be what we were doing before. That's what I want to see. I just put on. We, we want to have a conversation. Be we funny. have a number of people where it's like, once we turn the cameras on, it's like, it's not comedians, it's more the porn people. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, we were having a great conversation. Turn it on. Oh, you went to professional mode? God fucking damn I mean, it. Why? We have, I've learned, like, I've seen that as much. I've learned oh sometimes God, I've that, it like, yeah. and yeah. it's, it's when they work with a large company, I think, yes. more. Uh, and I don't want to name any names because we we love the people that we've had yeah. on. Yeah, they they also, Well, it's, you know what it is? It's, it's not their fault. It's yeah. representation because it's how you have to represent yourself to mainstream media outlets. Yeah. And Whereas with us, we're like, you know what? We know that people want people to be a little bit more casual themselves. You're still going to communicate the right messaging yeah. and the same and, points. And there's one woman we had on who was porn adjacent, and I'm sure you know who exactly who I'm talking about, and I'll, I'll, I don't want to say the name no, of yeah. her, but it's like she works... She, she works in Las Vegas, or yeah. sorry, in the Vegas okay. area, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and she was she was wonderful. I love that she gave us so much of her time, and she was so informative. But you could hear her go from script, like when Alice asked her a pointed question, to like, I could I, I was listening to when she was giving yeah. a script. I'm like, where can I get an in to ask her a goofy one? Yeah. And when I asked her a goofy one, I could get her to loosen up a bit. But like, she had script, 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 script in her head. And like, exactly. it's good that it was informative. It's also like, man, I love it when we're just having a fucking conversation. Yeah. I'm trying know? to problem solve yeah. this in my head. This is sort of how my brain works. But I don't want this to sound like a critique, but I think it, it has it has a, it has a lot to do with the two of you as a team are very professional. So then I think that oh, puts somebody puts genius. somebody in that in that mode where they go where like you like you're hitting very like even like from the start you're hitting very like concise and deliberate uh, punchlines, talking points sometimes. So I yeah, think maybe yeah. people are trying to match but, your energy. Well, and I also wear you're good. You're good. So yeah. Yeah. Fuck professional. But, no, I, mean, I don't want to. Well, be. We figured out what, it, there is a good dynamic here because Alice is good at keeping us on track. I am a Fuck up. Uh, that's, so, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, like, that's like so, that's. But funny. I mean, but what will happen was because Alice will come in with notes and with plans and with talking points, yeah. and like I try to read because like I it's it's a lot of what I do is just like how well can I read someone? So like yeah. I'll try to read the dynamic between the two of them and what what they're comfortable with, and I know kind of the sex universe a little more because I I used to go to a forty year two in my life, uh, but like yeah. I'll try to read what I can from them and try to improv it a bit more, and I mean it works because we have straight man and goofball right. uh, running it. And well, there's that. Look, that's so funny. That dynamic has, has played itself out in, in, in media for so long. It's still how we do sportscasts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's the color commentator and the play-by-play -play guy. Yeah. Color commentator is shenanigans. He literally yeah. like might be saying stuff that has no base. And then, the, and then the guy who's the um, the the play-by-play -play has to like sort of like jump in quick, correct it, and yeah. then just get back to the game. This is a guy went to uh, the guy. The voice of the White Sox was my college roommate, and he's dope. And now oh, he wow. does. He does all kinds of other sports. So when I, when I hear him on, it's great because he'll put up with a shenanigan guy. Yeah. And he's very smart and very funny. And so the combo is very good because he can, he'll can he play with the shenanigans and then quickly for the audience correct it. Nice. But there's something about – and then I read I just read the Dean Martin, um, uh, Jerry Lewis book. Yeah. And there was something great in entertainment about having the two guys. It's, and yep. And we've lost that. And I think the first step in losing that was was Don Rickles, where he felt oh, like God, he needed yeah. to make fun of the audience because yeah. he needed there to be the two person dynamic still. And it's just the audience was his other person, and he had to make them. The, he had to make them the That's the part of the joke. Sad that we lost him a few years ago. Is this Rickles dead? Yeah, yeah. it's I. There's I a, uh, Jimmy Kimmel gave a, like, like, like a tearful monologue. Yeah, he about was that. wonderful, he was, but he's he was gonna die. Yeah, I mean that's everyone's got it. Yeah. But like when you get to that age, that's yeah. gonna happen. He, but what's great is that he was he was a goddamn jokester until that until that moment. Yeah. Lou, Jerry Lewis just died too. Yeah, we're losing all we're losing this 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 well, this crew of people that um, we learned comedy. That were the yeah that yeah. were the best. They made comedy yeah. what it is today. Like I mean, if we go back, like there was I forget who I heard this quote from, but. You know, if you look at uh, everyone from a certain era, they all sound like Lenny Bruce was. But why was right. Lenny, so? Why was Lenny Bruce so good? Because nobody ever sounded like that right. before. Because he was the first one. Because the without first Lenny step, Bruce, no one sounded like the first that. First step no of one, comedy is emulation. Usually. Yeah, exactly. Nobody sounds like they do today without Lenny Bruce, without George Carlin, without Richard Pryor, without yeah. those three. The, without the Holy Trinity, we are not where we are today in comedy. Without yeah. it's it's magic what happened from that. Yeah. Um, I'm very passionate about that. No, it's, <laughs> it's like, no, it's like burst out, and I'm like, I don't have any energy now. <laughs> Here's what happens in stand up, though, and the, and the more I watch old old school stuff, the more I realize that we're much less talented now. Like the like Carol Burnett show, they can sing, they can dance, they can do a sketch, they can do a bit, they can do a thing, do all this stuff. Is it because it's coming from vaudeville, so they can do everything? Is it they're more talented, or that we don't necessarily put singing and dancing into comedy? Because there I are think, people who do. Of, I think if you could do all acting of it, nowadays. Yeah, I, I mean, think if you could do all of it, you, then yeah, you have more talent. I, I mean, I sing, but I don't do it on the podcast. Yeah. It would get awkward. <laughs> oh, no. 
It's, I'm not exactly going to start singing Deep Throat It, Girl. Like, that's not a thing I'm going to yeah. get into. Is that a song? I, we could make it one. Okay, okay yeah. It's Rule 34. <laughs> it gonna happen. Are we now going to come out with an album? Fine. Okay, I'll get a record deal. Yeah. It's all, it's, it's all going to be humming, though, you know. Uh, yeah, I like your answer before, which is why you guys are a team. You're like, well, I, I liked her and I wanted it to be a thing, so I made it a thing. So like this idea, I'll just get us a record deal. No big deal. Fine, fine, record. I'll do it. I will make this happen. You it's want to write a book? Fine, I'll find us a publisher. It's happening. <laughs> um, okay, so you, uh, it sounds like you guys have a much more successful podcast than this one, so I appreciate your time. How do we find your podcast? How do we listen to it? How do we do all the things? Uh, so first, uh, to find us individually, you can find me over at the Sidebabe on Twitter and Instagram, or I'm Snarky and Sciency. And there are lots of places where you can find TGOM podcasts or uh, Two Girls One Like Alice. You have all the rundown. You guys are so yes. good, TGOM. You yes. guys are so good. But the don't wrong. type. I, my in. brain can't work that. But TGOM. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Oh, it's your podcast. But don't type in TGOM if you're trying to search us on all the podcast apps. So Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Pandora, iTunes, wherever. Uh, just go. Uh, just type in Two Girls One Mic, but spell out two girls one mic uh the porn cast you could also just search porn cast and we will show up we're the ones with the white background a bra and a mic uh i say that because when we started we actually were the Coins only yeah. two girls on mic uh, that was active there was, yeah there was more yeah. than like five years ago well, that was dead. Two girls on now mic. since we've been out for over, close to two years yeah. there's like several and everyone is calling their there's, thing a porn cast there's, there, there are a handful of like a couple of people kind of I don't want to say that they copied our format, but they're <laughs> annoyingly close to our format. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just. I had somebody. I run a, I run a comedy festival in Hoboken, New Jersey, and I had a guy what? take my my byline, word for word, <gasps> what? for the next time over, and he just crossed that Hoboken and he just put Jersey City in Stop. it, and it was the exact like the exact phrasing that I had never seen before, and I was like, "You're too close to the," and also you didn't book me, like you're too close, and you didn't book me. This doesn't work. <laughs> It's like no, if you had at least given me given me a type a type fifteen on your stage, yeah. we would have been okay. Well, luckily his 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 thing was unsuccessful. It doesn't exist anymore. So, <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. It's so, fine. but emulation is the what is it called? Uh, so uh, imitation is for flattery. flattery. Yeah. But so, uh, in this case, it's just they had a network to start on. So yeah, we're coming for you. So what I'm trying to say is, by the way, if you guys can't find us for one reason or another, just type in twogirlsonmike.com. We'll lead you right to the podcast. Great. Um, you had an accent for some reason. <laughs> she does. She does it is my, Where did they come from? Uh, did I have? Yeah, all of a sudden. English is not her first language. Where are you from? It, Polish is my first language. Okay. It just came out just for a second. So that oh, no. Was, we finally <laughs> mixed the pinnacle. What, what, I, what I like to say about comedy is like we, we do everything we can to get to minute 45. Minute 45 is like the most... Um, Vulnerable and like you've, you've you've gone so far with an audience that you can you can accomplish way more at that minute that last minute and we've done that now because we've gotten your accent. <laughs> and then as a comedian, it, once you become like a famous celebrity comedian, you can start at minute forty five and then go to the next like forty five after that. You're deep after that. Well, because well, because yeah, then you're you're really in it because now you have the credibility in the room is is innate and you can't you can't do anything wrong by these people. So but I need so to start we, having a little bit more of a Slavic accent when I speak. Great. Minute 40, yeah, minute 45, we've Great. gotten to the truth. That's how we did it. Let the Polish accent come through and we'll get more people that we have to call the FBI on. It'll be fun. I'm going to love great. your brains on this because I've been doing stuff for Instagram, safe for work content, where we do sort of like a weird human challenge. So I'm going uh, I'm going to pick your brains on what we're going to do for that. Be two minutes of content. Check it on Instagram. Uh, this is the Porn Stars or People podcast. Uh, we're on iTunes, Google Play, whatever thing you're on. We're on the other thing. Uh, we're sponsored by Spunk Lube and Demon Seed Radio Network rebroadcasts us. Uh, check us out. We drop an episode every Monday. Thank you for my guests. Thank you. Two girls, one mic podcast, the originators of that phrase. So check them out. Thank you guys for listening and watching.